Hi, I'm Mark Shander, the executive producer of Healthy Eyes with Dr. C. That's Dr. John Krasakis, Saturdays at 2 p.m. right here on NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. So far on his show, Dr. C has shared information and helped us really understand new technology and progressive lenses, easy ways to protect our eyes, and what diseases like age-related macular degeneration are and how you treat them. Dr. C and his guests also offer a behind-the-scenes look at what happens when your eye doctor and the labs filling your lens prescriptions and lens manufacturers all work together. This is your eye care team, and your eye doctor is your quarterback, matching state-of-the-art digital measurement technology with state-of-the-art digital manufacturing techniques. Dr. C and his guests help listeners understand that saving our vision is a partnership between us and a caring team of eye care professionals who serve your eye care needs by matching technology to you and your specific needs. Now, older technology works just fine, but this is your vision we're talking about. Don't compromise on your eye care solution by rushing through the process just because you can. Yes, you can still get more than one pair of eyeglasses at a great price, very likely the same day, when your eye care professional uses state-of-the-art technology to better match your glasses to you. Wouldn't you agree that your eyes deserve more than a cheap fast food vision care experience geared toward the masses? Find out more about how easy it is to take the best care of your eyes and call in with your questions about eye care. Even find out how today's vision technology helps you keep your eyesight sharper for the rest of your life. Don't miss Healthy Eyes with Dr. C. Saturdays at 2 p.m. right here on NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. It's easy to remember to ask for Kodak lenses. Protect your eyes and learn more about Transitions lenses by visiting your eye doctor or transitions.com. NBC 1260 is KBSZ. Also operates on 96.1 FM. Welcome to the show. You're listening to Healthy Eyes with Dr. C. I'm executive producer Mark Shander. Welcome to the show, Dr. C. You have a guest today. What's the topic that you brought in a guest for, and who is your guest? I have no idea. <laughs> Some guy you met in the hall on the way I just, over? I just found him in the parking lot. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, I have a, a guest today. His name is Stan Balka. Stan is the general manager of Meridian Optical. Meridian Optical is a wholesale laboratory here in Phoenix. What I thought I'd do with Stan is have him in to discuss different things that we do a wholesale laboratory actually takes our prescriptions and will make the lenses that go into the frames so we send the prescription in the frame down to the lab and the lab puts everything together to come up with the final result that you put on your face so, so it's kind of your stan you're the pharmacist of the uh, of the prescription for the eye do you do both contacts and glasses and lenses or no we don't do contacts just just glass lenses plastic lenses index lenses so you take what's a prescription that uh, Dr. C writes, and you physically look at it and say well, you're going to fill the prescription. And how, how do you go about doing that? Well, we we have basically about a million dollars worth of lenses in inventory. And depending on what's chosen, we'll uh, take that lens and basically fabricate it through a machine shop for eyeglasses. So it's a, a there's we have 65 people and a lot of equipment, and the equipment basically takes something that looks like a hockey puck, and it grinds the prescription on it, and then it takes that hockey puck and puts on coatings, and then we uh, cut that lens down to fit a frame the same way a key is made from a former. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, Stan, how long have you been in this industry? 42 years. Okay, and the only reason I ask that question is you've probably seen a lot of changes in this industry, just like we all have with everything else that we do. But when it comes to spectacle lenses, there are so many differences that can occur that we, we're going to get into the conversation of uh, what I call the, the commoditizing of, of eyewear, where now it's, it's, it's come to the point where people just want a pair of glasses and every pair of glasses is equal, and it's really not the case where there are a lot of differences in lenses nowadays. And one of the biggest areas is in progressive edition lenses. Those are the no-line bifocals. Before we go into the progressive edition lenses specifically, what changes have you seen in, in your industry in the last 10 years? What's, what are the biggest changes you've seen? Well, I, I think the industry does about the same thing that um, uh, the telephone uh, industry has done. Well, you've got a million applications that can be put onto a, an iPod or uh, an iPad, and uh, the cell phones that we have with 
you know, you could reach people around the world and look at all the apps. We have the same thing. Once the computer has developed different types of technology that can be ground, it, it's limitless. So we see changes every day. And in fact, at our lab, we just put in a million dollars worth of equipment so we can do digital grinding, uh, which is a is a extremely enhanced uh, uh, prescription uh, to give people better vision. Yeah. So that's the the point where that I'm trying to make here is that they're in dealing with different lenses. Now I'm kind of looking over at Mark here to, to keep him as part of the conversation because Mark's not in this industry. In that, when 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 I prescribe a progressive edition lens. Um, and it has a price tag on it of so many hundreds of dollars, there could be countless other lenses that are possibly more expensive or less expensive based on the technology that goes into them. And, you know, there are a lot of places that sell relatively inexpensive progressive edition lenses, and they're, you know, 1980s technology. Now, that doesn't mean they don't work. You know, the analogy that Stan and I were talking about coming up here, with, you could say the same thing with a telephone. You could take a cell phone that was that four pound brick you'd hold up to your ear and yeah they work it can work but god wouldn't you rather have a uh an ipad an iphone that you can put apps on and you can you can uh, talk on and you can send emails and you can do text messages and everything else so as technology improves we can do more things with these lenses and so it's our job as um as eye doctors and as opticians and as ophthalmologists when patients come in we have to try and um, educate patients that there are differences out there. And Stan has the capability of using this newest technology. He can make the old stuff, too. I have a question, then. Um, you know, you, you brought cell phones up. Cell phone technology started it out uh, as, as analog technology, and they started pushing people to digital technology so that they could have more conversations within the same amount of frequency spectrum. What does digital do for, for you guys in your industry? How does it help people? Well, I think you can, there's a lot of analogies that you can use. Uh, you can use, you know, you can compare things in the television industry from an old black and white TV to a more current uh, TV. Uh, digital in, in our industry, probably some of the better features of it is that you can look in the peripheral and you can see accurately very fast. Your eyes don't have to take time to focus in the peripheral. And if you say, well, that doesn't mean anything to me, well, when you're driving in a car and you need to look at your side view mirror, you, you better be able to see it clearly and distinctly or you may be causing an accident. So digital vision actually helps you to see anywhere you point your eyes. So it's more precision related. Uh, is it part of the manufacturing process where you're using digital technology to make more accurate uh, manufacture something that's closer to the prescription that's written or uh, how, how does that how does digital help you there in in the um, in the older lens styles that we grind and we still do those when we grind an optic uh, an optical center according to dr. C's prescription uh, that's basically right in front of the pupil that's how it's ground and as you look away from the the center of that lens, as you look two millimeters away, 10 millimeters away, or 20 millimeters away, your sight is slightly compensated. When, when we do a digital prescription, each millimeter that you point your eye away from the center, there is a power to that lens that is accurate for that distance away from the center. What kind of resolution is there to that? Are there, are there 64 steps between one position and the, and the center, maybe the outer perimeter? Or is, are there 256? Or how many different stages of different... Or is it just every two millimeters it's a little no, more accurate? No, it, it, it basically, in between millimeters, it, it adapts. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's, yeah. it's so how amazing. do you measure that? Uh, going, uh, how do you measure someone's eyes to see uh, that it's not linear, that they actually, as they're, you're going through their peripheral vision, the closer they get to the center, they need a little more help here, but a little well, less help here and a little we, more. We don't. We know what the prescription is in the primary, in the primary gaze. And then it's, it's just optical formulations as when you go to look away from the center, it's because the lens is curving uh, in, at different rates. And so they try and make it so that wherever you look in that lens, you're getting the same prescription. So, so the prescription 
really is there a shame. need for a tool then that doesn't exist where someone would like like yourself would need more specific testing of a patient for each particular millimeter as the eye travels to make sure that the prescription's accurate throughout the vision center or uh, throughout the whole visual range or the there, throughout the whole eye? There's actually some testing equipment now for the optometric practice that will test uh, several more uh, items than is uh, typically done. So we, we can test the vertex distance of the lens away from your eye, uh, even, even the uh, head cape, uh, the amount your head is tilted from one side to another. There's a lot more definition to what goes into the lens than before. And what about on the side of the person who's doing the prescription, though? How does that person communicate to you that they need that level of, uh, of detail within that particular lens? The prescriptions are coming over to us uh, via an electronic method. Ah, okay. And, and so when it comes over, all of those parameters are put into the formula, and the lens is made according to the formula. And so you were being asked as the doctor to put those specific points of right. measurement into the prescription electronically. So there's not a case where you could, you're, you're missing it. It's the computer's encouraging you to make sure you you fill in all this data. Exactly. It's just another technological marvel. <laughs> Uh, 16 minutes after the hour, you're listening to Healthy Eyes on NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. I'm executive producer Mark Shander, and uh, we have Dr. C with us. And Dr. C, your guest is Stan Alka. Okay, and Stan, you're from? I live in Casa Grande. I work in Phoenix. Okay. Uh, originally Chicago. Okay, and well, we're not going to hold that against him. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we, if you'd like to get in on the conversation, and this is an opportunity to ask what happens behind the scenes after you've seen, uh, you've had the, uh, you've had an eye exam. This is what happens uh, when your lenses are manufactured. Give us a call four eight zero four two three twelve sixty 423 1260 is the number to call to get in on the conversation. We will be back with more healthy eyes right after this. Hi, I'm Mark Shander, executive producer of Healthy Eyes. Every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m., right here on NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. Your eyes are more than just your window to the world. They're how other people see you and sometimes see right through you. Find out how to protect your vision with the latest technology in eye care this Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. right here on NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. Talk back to Dr. C online at www.drsee.com. The doctors and staff of Tempe Eye Care Associates at 7511 South McClintock Drive in Tempe are committed to providing you state-of-the-art eye care services and products in a comfortable and friendly atmosphere. Remember the bionic man? We're not quite there yet, but we're not as far away as you might think. Through annual comprehensive eye examinations, the goal at Tempe Eye Care Associates is to not only maximize your visual performance, but to ensure and maintain your healthy eyes. As part of your annual examination, your visual acuity will be measured and a test known as refraction is conducted to determine your eye's refractive power. Further tests are performed to determine your visual coordination, muscle control, and focusing abilities. Your examination will include a comprehensive evaluation of your eye health to detect diseases such as glaucoma, cataracts, and retina and optic nerve abnormalities. The ocular health evaluation includes neurological assessments, measurement of internal eye pressure, and a thorough examination of the internal and external structures of the eye. Tempe Eye Care Associates also offers the OptoMap Retinal Examination System. OptoMap allows many patients the option to forego dilating drops by providing an ultra-wide view of the retina. While it doesn't replace dilation in all patients, it's an option for many. After performing these tests, their doctors will discuss your results and, if needed, explain your prescription and give you a better understanding of your overall eye health. Traditional options such as glasses, contact lenses, and eye medications will be discussed, as well as any other options you may need to consider. 
Dr. C is available to assist you personally, so you know you're getting the best available eye care, even if you're not on the Valley's basketball, baseball, hockey, or football teams. You'll see better after you see Dr. C. To make an appointment to visit Dr. C, call his office right now at 480-967-4910. That's 480-967-4910. Help keep your eyes healthy regardless of where you live in the valley by starting with a call to the office of Dr. C. 480-967-4910 today. 480 480- 9674910 or visit www.tempiicareassociates.com that's www.tempiicareassociates.com Now the talk continues and you're just a phone call away on Entertaining Talk Radio, NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. Welcome back to Healthy Eyes with Dr. C. Every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. Arizona time. Get in on the conversation. Call 480-423-1260 right now and talk about your healthy eyes on the air. Once again, with Healthy Eyes, here is your host, Dr. C. 22 minutes after the hour, and we're back with Stan Balka. I just wanted to go over one more thing before we move on to another subject. In, uh, during the break, I was talking uh, with Mark, and he was asking questions about the different prescriptions in different areas of the lens. And it's not that as you look off to the side, your prescription changes, and we have to make different, uh, we have to get a different prescription at different parts of, the, uh, of your gaze. It's that as you look through different parts of the lens that are possibly a, a different distance from your eye or the lens has a different curvature or you're a tall person or a short person that that can change what you're seeing and this new technology makes it so it's the same prescription whether it's um in the center of the lens or off to the periphery uh it's kind of hard to do in a in a wrap um in a wrapped lens like let's say a uh, a sunglass sometimes we can't get it that fine out there but in a regular ophthalmic frame they're doing a great job of keeping that prescription the same and also during the break stan you were saying there's a difference between a tall person and a short person and how they would relate to their glasses and how they wear them and where potentially they look out of well there's a lot of fitting techniques that if if you're aware of of watching uh, the patient, usually we tell them to sit straight, move up to the table, and keep their head erect, but that's not how they normally look. So when you, when you take a look at how they stand, their stance, their, their, head, um, uh, their head motions themselves, because if you're a tall person, I'm, gener- I'm six foot four, and I generally am looking at somebody that's five foot ten or six foot at best, and uh, I have to look downward at them. So my fitting is different than, you know, the way it would be with others. 24 minutes after the hour, you're listening to Healthy Eyes on NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. I'm executive producer Mark Shander. 480-423-1260 is the number to call to get in on the conversation. And uh, we have Mr. Sagas has called in from Scottsdale. Welcome to the show, Mr. Sagas. Nice to be here, Mark. And uh, you have a question for uh, Stan and for uh, Ms. Dr. C? Sure, I have a question for Stash and uh, Dr. C there. All righty. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, you might want to turn your radio down in the background there or actually uh, lower it so uh, you just are listening through the phone if that's okay. Well, it's in, it's in, the, uh, it's in the kitchen and I'm in the bedroom. All right. <laughs> I just wanted John to know that this is the first time I've had him. Hold on a minute, Mark. Let me get this radio off. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> so he's walking through the... He's, he's leaving the bedroom. He's walking down the hall, passing the bathroom on the we, left. We can, act this, the we can act this way because I know now, who his there? caller is. <laughs> okay. you, just, you, just, you just tell him that, uh, like I said, it's my first time on calling him, and now I've got him on television... I've got him on my PC, I've got him on the phone, and I don't want to hear no more complaints from him. <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you tell your father you're on the radio. 
<laughs> nice. What? What? Is, you know, having a, somebody that is a uh, professional available to you twenty four seven, if you will, as opposed to just during office hours or when they'll see you. What's been the benefit of having a, you know your son that is a medical professional like this and be having him ni- be nice, <laughs> having him available whenever uh, something's hurt? And then what's the? Here's the other part of the question: Is what's the funniest thing that you? Well, I shouldn't say funniest thing. What is the thing that is not related to eyesight that's ever hurt that you've asked for his opinion on? Uh, listen, he's my guru. He's been all over the world with me, so any time I have a question, I ask him. You too, Stash. Nice. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's nice to have somebody that you know. You know what? When you develop a relationship with someone who's an eye care professional that uh, that you trust, regardless of whether you're related to them or not, you should be able to talk to them that way. Would you guys agree? Totally. That's that's what Absolutely. you're looking for. You're looking for somebody that you can have a relationship with long term. And that kind of brings us to the point we were talking about, uh, would you want to get your uh, glasses in about an hour? And uh, uh, when you get your glasses, what the difference is between kind of, is it rushing through to get them in an hour? And how come I can't go from seeing an eye care professional that I've made an appointment in a standalone facility to to getting the glasses there and getting them back and getting out the door and having, uh, you know, the wham, bam, thank you, and I'm out uh, all at one time in a very fast way, as is being done almost in a production line method today. I'll let Stan address that because what he doesn't cover... And by the way, thank you very much for the call, Mr. Sykes. It's a pleasure to have uh, had you on the show. Okay. Thank back- you very much and give my regards to both of them. <laughs> back, Thanks, to, back to your nap, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nick. <laughs> so what I was going to say, I'll let, I'll let Stan answer the question about the, uh, the one-hour spectacles. Well, uh, let's... Uh, uh, I, I like analogies. Let's compare it to feet. Um, if you needed some sort of uh, uh, orthotics, uh, you, you can't go into a store, buy a pair, and leave. You need some fittings done. Uh, well, so- well, you can, though. You can get the ones that are pre-manufactured, and they, they slip right in. And, uh, to you know, what is the difference? Well, uh, in an hour, I can make you a pair of glasses. I can make you a progressive in an hour. Uh, with an older technology, not the newest, but I can make you a pair of glasses and you'll probably be able to see okay. Uh, We have an anti-reflective coating that is highly uh, recommended for everybody. Uh, Anti-reflective coatings in our laboratory take eight hours to put on. You can't get an hour prescription with an eight hour coating. It doesn't work. Uh, and that coating helps prevent glare and improves your vision. Uh, so every every additional feature that is necessary takes time, and uh, it's just the way it is. So uh, an hour is uh, something I could walk through, but not something that you'll uh, like later on. So the difference is is that the uh, the efficiency of of your glasses. You're going to pay the same thing anyway. Why wouldn't you want the ones where the time was taken to make sure that they're the, the best possible thing? We're talking about your eyesight. We're not talking about did you wear a shirt that you know looks like it, it was a designer shirt and you know it uh, you didn't pay a lot for it. It's a it's a matter of you're going to pay the same thing. Why wouldn't you want the better quality? Why wouldn't you want the best? And you should invest as much time in getting the right glasses as as you expect the person on the other side, the professional, to invest in making them. Well, I would I would never say that you can't get a a let's say a quality job in an hour but there are certain things that you that you can't do and uh what can you you not do in an hour that that you really would recommend that you you need is it because of a specific prescription or just in general typically you know it any anything that's not out of anything that's not within the norm that they're going to have uh in stock in their lab uh that's going to take longer because now they have to generate that and surface that or or anything like let's say the coatings that we're talking about the um the quote unquote better because there are different anti-reflection coatings too there are some that aren't as good as others the one stan's talking about happens to be probably the best ar coat that uh, that we have available to us so you can get things but this is all part of the commoditization of glasses because you can get a pair of glasses and it'll work it's a it's a question of are you within that you know the bell curve are you in the middle of the bell curve are you off to the sides if you're off to the side of the bell curve i guarantee it's not going to work um whether you do it in an hour or whether you do it online or anything else like that, if you can always get 
a deal and you can always get glasses that will work, but are they working the best that they can? And are you getting the best for the money you're paying? Stan, you talked about grinding the lenses. Is that still a manual process where someone, it's almost like cutting a diamond, if you will? Uh, well, it uses diamonds to cut the lenses. So if you if you recall, I said it looks like a hockey puck to start with. Uh, generally, the front surface of that lens has a bifocal or a progressive already molded in the front. And then we'll grind a combination of the front curves to the back curves and make the prescription that's necessary. Uh, so um, the, the grinding technique utilizes diamonds. And then there's a polishing technique that is similar to a lapidary process. So it's a, it's a fining down just like What nails. is a lapidary process? Uh, just like, you know, people who polish stones. Okay. So we use the same kinds of grit of uh, 3M products. We use uh, polishes that are similar. And like I said before, it's, it's similar to a machine shop making lenses. Uh, and if you uh, look at the end result there with a progressive lens or a bifocal, uh, the minimum time just to produce the curves is an hour. Uh, but to put on the treatments and do uh, the anti-reflective coatings is significantly longer. Did you want to kick it to the break, Dr. C, or did you want me to? I was just going to say it's 32 minutes after the hour. We're going to take a break. If you uh, want to call in, the number is 480-423-1260 if you have any questions for Stan. Uh, but we'll be right back. Transitions Optical is dedicated to promoting healthy sight worldwide. Transitions lenses do more than correct and protect vision. They enhance the way you see everyday life. By adapting to changing life conditions, they bring out the best in all that you see, so life looks more vivid, more vibrant, more true. Transitions lenses are the number one photochromic lenses recommended by eye care professionals worldwide. Protect your eyes and learn more about Transitions lenses by visiting your eye doctor or transitions.com. Well, we that same evening. Okay, everybody, smile for the camera. Wait, I need to get my glasses off. They always reflect the light, and I don't like the way they look. That's it. You're getting anti-reflexive lenses, too. Yahoo! It's easy to remember to ask for Kodak lenses. Hi, I'm Mark Shander, executive producer of Healthy Eyes. Every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m., right here on NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. Your eyes are more than just your window to the world. They're how other people see you and sometimes see right through you. Find out how to protect your vision with the latest technology in eye care this Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m., right here on NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. Hey Dan, how's it going? Great. Nice looking eyeglasses. Thanks. They look good and I can see clearer too. My doctor recommended these new digital lenses. He said that they're the latest in lens technology. It makes sense. Everything is going digital. Uh, there's my ride. See ya. Bye. Hey, what are those lenses called again? Kodak. Ask for Kodak lenses. Kodak, huh? That'll be easy to remember. It's easy to remember to ask for Kodak lenses. Transitions Optical is dedicated to promoting healthy sight worldwide. Transitions lenses do more than correct and protect vision. They enhance the way you see everyday life. By adapting to changing light conditions, they bring out the best in all that you see, so life looks more vivid, more vibrant, more true. Transitions lenses are the number one photochromic lenses recommended by eye care professionals worldwide. Protect your eyes and learn more about Transitions lenses by visiting your eye doctor or transitions.com. The talk continues, and you're just a phone call away on Entertaining Talk Radio, NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. Welcome back to Healthy Eyes with Dr. C. Every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. Arizona time, get in on the conversation. Call 480-423-1260 right now and talk about your healthy eyes on the air. Once again, with Healthy Eyes, here is your host, Dr. C. And we're back. Uh, this is Dr. C. I'm here with Stan Balka from Meridian Optical. He's the general manager down there, and he's giving us some insights into how uh, glasses are made and what's going on with technology. But before we go on to the next subject, we have a caller. 
Tony from Chandler. Thanks for calling in. Uh, hello, doctor. Can you hear me? I can. Yes, thank you, sir. Hey, uh, curious. I have uh, had a real nice pair of glasses that I lost. I'm, I'm devastated about it. However, they had the transitions uh, to make them dark when I go outside. Right. So since I have my backup pair, I'm, I'm forced to go along with these. They're not transitions. Is it possible to put that on, you know, afterwards? After the uh, fact? Yeah, yeah. If I was to bring them to you or to somebody who sent me to, would, uh, would they be able to put that? Because I like the fact that they tint when you go outside. You know, and they, they do their thing. I got so used to them and the drag without them. No, Transitions is a great product. The The problem that you have is the transition is built into the lens, and so you can't go back. It's not a coating. So you can't you can't just take those in and, and put that put that on there. You have to get another pair of lenses if you want to get the Transitions. Oh, one it's thing, not a film or something, huh? No, it is not. Now, one thing you could do if you wanted to just temporarily until you got the new pair, you could go see if you could get a clip-on to where you could clip on a, a sunglass over the top of your frame to give you some uh, protection uh, from the from the bright sun until you uh-huh. went out, until you went out and got that extra the other pair that you have to replace now okay that sounds like a plan all right well that's about it thank you so much have a wonderful day thanks for calling in appreciate it i love it. your show it's a great show except for that old man that was on a minute ago yeah can you yeah. what's up with that i don't know man i i don't know i i, I, I thought he had the seeing eye dog by now but I'm not all right gentlemen have a good day thanks tony so, and that was unsolicited. I, <laughs> what, what? Who knew that you were going to build such a fan base yeah, so quickly? Yeah, who knew? <laughs> so, what I what I want to go on go into next is, um, you know, when when people come into the office and uh, they've got various maladies, various complaints, uh, they'll tell me that they have a problem here and a problem there, and everyone wants to get um, a, a, a single pair of glasses to 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 handle all their needs. I think most people know they need a pair of sunglasses, and so that's becoming, you know, uh, an easy thing for them to, to, to get. But when, when you sit in front of the computer for, you know, eight hours a day, is the same lens going to work for you? And a lot of people can do that, especially once you're into bifocals, you can get a progressive edition lens and, and you can do that. But sometimes we have to uh, write different prescriptions for different things. And what I was going to talk about with Stan now is what options we have out there from a manufacturing standpoint uh, and why why we do need some of these lenses. And so, Stan, if we could just start talking about, um, you know, if, I come, if you come in and I write you uh, three prescriptions, one for a, uh, a regular dress pair of glasses, one for a computer pair of glasses, and then something for uh, uh, a hobby or recreation, what, why is that something that we could we could use? Yeah, why? This? And, and from the layman's perspective, why do I need three pairs of glasses if my prescription is the same, uh, Stan? Well, um, why do you need more than one pair of shoes? If you have a comfortable pair that you wear at work because uh, you're in a work environment, that's fine. Uh, maybe your wife wants to go out to dinner tonight, and maybe that pair isn't sufficient. So now you have to have a pair of black dress shoes. And then again, maybe you're into exercise and you need a pair of uh, good tennis shoes. And I know Dr. C is into the marathon. You can't buy a $20 pair of shoes to run 26 miles. Your feet will tear up. In the eyeglass industry, it's no different. Our our problem is that we don't educate patients to know that there's uh, specific needs for their eyes the same way as there are for their feet. Uh, The the, uh, insurance industry has uh, basically uh, not done a real good job with the explanation of why you're offered a pair of glasses. What they tend to do is say, you know, you get one free frame, you get one pair of lenses, and so you think that's all you're allowed. But the bottom line is, I mean, they can't buy pairs and pairs and pairs for everybody, but they're allowing you to get your main pair. Uh, You have to be uh, aware that you have different needs. So when you're at the computer, for instance, uh, you're you're setting a computer approximately the screen is you know maybe 25 27 inches away and uh, you're locked in a gaze there but your your resting focus is actually a couple feet behind the screen so you're constantly stressing your eyes straining them to look 27 inches away and uh, it's uncomfortable 
So it'd be the same as if I ask you to hold a briefcase at arm's length horizontally to the ground. You could hold it there for a minute. You might be able to hold it for a couple minutes, but after a while, your arm's going to get really tired. That's what happens with your eyes. Uh, so w there are specific lenses that are made almost like an inverted progressive. And so rather than the, the top part being completely uh, 180 horizontal where you could see through the whole thing, the bottom part that you need to use the keyboard is real wide. The intermediate at the computer is really wide. The distance, which most often is not necessary at the computer, is very narrow, a small channel. So lenses are made with specific needs and no one knows about them. I had no idea that so, you should have different types of lenses for different purposes like that. If or What I like to tell my patients is if we get you your, your dress pair, if that one pair of glasses does everything you need it to, fine. Have one pair of glasses and then a pair of sunglasses for when you go outside because of everything we talked about in previous shows with ultraviolet and everything else that that can cause, having a pair of sunglasses is great. However, if you wear that sim that single pair of glasses and you complain about the computer or you complain about uh, what do I do when I ride my bike because I'm a competitive, even if you're not a competitive rider, you just go out and ride your bike two or three times a week uh, and you're bending over and um, in the in the while you're while you're riding your bike and you want to have some different lenses for that. I mean, there are different lenses for whatever you need to do if you have a complaint there. So I never tell people they have to have more than one pair unless there's a specific need. But if they've got a complaint. I'm going to try and I'm going to try and solve that problem for him. So if I wanted to get three pairs of glasses and I wanted one for a while I was in the office, I'm doing business and I'm on the computer, one for while I maybe go out in the evening and uh, and and be social and do my thing, and then one for general purpose around the house, maybe occasionally watching TV or playing with the kids or whatever it is that I might do. Uh, my question is then is the the, the way that you've manufactured the lenses, does that limit my choices as far as the aesthetics of the frames are concerned? Or do I have uh, every single type of frame typically available based on what I'm going to be using lenses for? Well, most often, the, the if you're talking to a frame person, they're going to tell you that's the most important. But, but, <laughs> but we're not talking to a frame yeah, person. Exactly. We're talking to yeah. a lens person. <laughs> you're talking to a lens person, so I'll tell you that the most important need is the, the visual accommodation of the pair of glasses that we grind. So whether you, whether you, you know, let's say you're talking about that third or fourth pair uh, and you want to utilize an older frame, I don't think anybody would complain that you're trying to get some value out of the older pair. Uh, as long as they were uh, subject to manufacturing again and being able to be put together without being destroyed. Because uh, sometimes they're too old. And uh, if our old caller, uh, if Nick is still uh, uh, watching or listening to us, I'm sure that he's got a pair in the drawer that's about 25 years old. They they might not make another pair he doesn't, of lenses. He doesn't throw anything away. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he but, might have even inherited those. You never yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> or stole them from me. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, uh, the, the lenses, we can grind different prescriptions at that different distance. Not only a different design, but a different value to the prescription altogether based on that need. Interesting. Okay. 44 minutes after the hour, you're listening to Healthy Eyes on NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. We are live from the Best Buy Studios. 480-423-1260 is the number to call to get in on the conversation. We will be back with your questions and you and more of Healthy Eyes right after this. Hi, I'm Mark Shander, executive producer of Healthy Eyes. Every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. right here on NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. Your eyes are more than just your window to the world. They're how other people see you and sometimes see right through you. Find out how to protect your vision with the latest technology in eye care this Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. right here on NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. Talk back to Dr. C online at www.drsee.com. The doctors and staff of Tempe Eye Care Associates at 7511 South McClintock Drive in Tempe are committed to providing you state-of-the-art eye care services and products in a comfortable and friendly atmosphere. Remember the bionic man? 
We're not quite there yet, but we're not as far away as you might think. Through annual comprehensive eye examinations, the goal at Tempe Eye Care Associates is to not only maximize your visual performance, but to ensure and maintain your healthy eyes. As part of your annual examination, your visual acuity will be measured and a test known as refraction is conducted to determine your eye's refractive power. Further tests are performed to determine your visual coordination, muscle control, and focusing abilities. Your examination will include a comprehensive evaluation of your eye health to detect diseases such as glaucoma, cataracts, and retina and optic nerve abnormalities. The ocular health evaluation includes neurological assessments, measurement of internal eye pressure, and a thorough examination of the internal and external structures of the eye. Tempe Eye Care Associates also offers the OptoMap Retinal Examination System. OptoMap allows many patients the option to forego dilating drops by providing an ultra-wide view of the retina. While it doesn't replace dilation in all patients, it's an option for many. After performing these tests, their doctors will discuss your results and, if needed, explain your prescription and give you a better understanding of your overall eye health. Traditional options such as glasses, contact lenses, and eye medications will be discussed, as well as any other options you may need to consider. Dr. C is available to assist you personally, so you know you're getting the best available eye care, even if you're not on the Valley's basketball, baseball, hockey, or football teams. You'll see better after you see Dr. C. To make an appointment to visit Dr. C, call his office right now at 480-967-4910. That's 480-967-4910. Help keep your eyes healthy, regardless of where you live in the valley, by starting with a call to the office of Dr. C. 480-967-4910 today. 480-967-4910. Or visit www.tempiicareassociates.com. That's www.tempiicareassociates.com. Now the talk continues, and you're just a phone call away on Entertaining Talk Radio, NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM. Welcome back to Healthy Eyes with Dr. C. Every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. Arizona time. Get in on the conversation. Call 480-423-1260 right now and talk about your healthy eyes on the air. Once again, with Healthy Eyes, here is your host, Dr. C. 50 minutes after the hour, we're back. Uh, we're talking with Stan Balka. And before we go on to the next subject, we're going to go back and talk a little bit more about different pairs of glasses for different things that we might do, whether it's a visual need or uh, a need such as a athletics, uh, sports, uh, hobbies. Uh, Stan, can you tell us something about lenses that you ha know that are available for different hobbies? Well, first of all, let me tell you that we're going to take over the radio station, and uh, we're not going to leave here for the next 24 hours. <laughs> we could probably talk about this for 24 hours. <laughs> uh, no, I, I wanted to bring up a, a situation that my wife's involved in. She she has a uh, bead making, uh, and I don't mean bracelets, but the bead itself. Uh, you could basically go down and buy glass rods of various colors and a little torch, and even though the torch is only about an inch long with the flame, it's connected to a great big tank of propane and oxygen. And you could buy all the gloves and accessories that go with it and learn how to make beads. But no one tells you that that flame is 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, that's, that's actually enough to burn your retina. Uh, so there, there is a recommended pair of lenses that you either need to have your prescription ground in or, as you brought up before, have a clip made to go over your current glasses, uh, which is probably the least expensive of the two. But uh, the lens is called didimium, and nobody knows about didimium. But Can you spell a, that? Uh, no, yes, no, no, yes, no, yes no, I could. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but didimium lenses are, are glass, and they're a, a, a rosy color. 
Uh, but as the heat of the flame builds, it actually turns to a bluish color, and then it comes back, um, and it basically prevents the uh, the radi- radiation, that ultraviolet, uh, from hitting your eye and burn your retina. So, uh, you know, it's just another little thing like no one told me. I didn't know. Um, how do you find those things out? There's There's hundreds and hundreds of opportunities for specialty eyewear that uh you know hopefully we'll we'll be able to talk about so it's similar to like a welder's flash yes so the welders have to wear their protective eyewear and, yeah and it's pretty it's pretty obvious in a welder's industry of what they're supposed to do but if you watch people on tv i watch all the motorcycle shows they close their eyes while the, while they're welding they're they're not necessarily wearing the glasses that they're supposed to um so there, there are safety techniques that you need to always take into consideration. Well, Mark, Mark's <laughs> bothering me here. Took Sorry, me, yeah. took me away from my it's train my of thought. It's my job as executive producer to bring these things to your attention. <laughs> he just found a website for protective eyewear for bead makers. <laughs> yeah, and it's interesting the 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 folks who are involved. In, I was thinking this is something that I hadn't come across in my research for the show, and it's like uh, protective eyewear for glass workers, lamp workers, uh, bead makers, and folks who are into. Um, Glassware as art, as an art form, uh, are very familiar with that type of uh, of eyewear for for protection as they're doing their work. And we'll have to look. And, that wasn't aware. And, of that. and there are five or six different lenses available depending on the intensity of the flame. That's interesting. I had no idea. So weld, you know, there's a lot of people who are listening to this show that do welding and that sort of thing, and they should be wearing these types of lenses and probably... Well, uh, welders probably have, have what they're supposed to, unless they're but the kind the of people... outside, though, right? Oh. Like as goggles, like we were talking about, but not typically coating on the, on their eyeglasses themselves, right? Well, they they should probably wear their protective their protective eye, their safety glasses and not do they should like, at all times. This is right more right. this is more for the the casual, not an occupational person, but someone who's doing it casually who does not have OSHA looking over them or any standards that were given to them. It's someone that uh, they need to. Sorry, you had the layman interruption. Yeah, no, yeah, I told you we're going to take over the station for 24 right. hours. It's a filibuster. Uh, it's an optical filibuster. No, I mean, here's another example. You have a, a somebody who's a plumber, or maybe it's not even their job, but they're plumbing underneath the sink in their home, and they're laying on their back in a god awful position, and they're trying to tighten a pipe above their head behind them. There's no near vision up there, unless you make a special lens that you could see up there eat you know night you know with good vision so uh there are occupational lenses that are available for most everything that's done but you wouldn't know that unless you were you know in the, over in the, the age, business over yeah. the age of 46 and you do it more than once a year or if if they came to your office and they said dr c and they said hey this is what i do for a living what do i need and i think that's another reason why you would potentially want to go to uh to, to someone who has a, a a better wealth of resources available to to fit your needs as opposed to someone who might just have a limited selection of of what they would tend to recommend exactly yeah a because one they size know fits all. yeah so when right. when you go to your your health practitioner and they're asking you a uh, hundred different questions i just changed health practitioners for my primary care physician they asked a whole bunch of questions even though they had my history you know or should have had my history from the other doctor i had it sent over in your case it's like all of these things uh, that people laymen don't understand that there are reasons that you're asking what do you do what do you do recreationally what do you do you know for, for this what's your your life style like so you can match the lifestyle to the 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 glass recommendation the glasses recommendation and i could be a cynic Lensric. and i could be a cynic and say that they think we're asking those questions so that we can sell more glasses i mean i don't care if they take their prescription and go get them somewhere else if if they've got a complaint i've got to come up with something to try and help them with that uh, try and solve that problem and you know and it's not all new technology you know stan mentioned the occupational lenses Pff, occupational bifocals have been around for years that's just something that that person could use it's just they haven't been educated that that's an option for them so it doesn't always have to be the newest technology what are some other occupations that people would need a special lens for that you wouldn't really think that they would right off the top of your head like a a carpenter has the same problem when they're hammering a nail uh you know if it's below them there's not a problem but if it's anywhere in front of them or above them they have the same vision problem 
So again, know, assuming that that person needs a bifocal and they can't yeah. see up close. Right. I mean, you know, there's single vision wearers that can wear a single vision and, and their eyes adapt readily. But those people who are, let's say, 40 or above have a little more problem with their eyes refocusing and they do need help. What about people who are in the entertainment industry where lighting is different based on what room you're in or what facility you're in or whether you're in this studio or another studio or even restaurants maybe when you're at when one room is of a particular darkness and then you go in the kitchen and it's really bright and does it does that matter over a period of time where the intensity of light changes and you might need different lenses because of that? <laughs> you, guys are, oh, you answer that. You answer that. Because you know, you're both experts at this. I know it's like. And how much time do we have? I, well, I, I think that the thing that, to understand that there is there are a lot of variations. So you know, does one pair fit all? No. And so if you did anything enough, or if you notice some sort of a, a, a difficulty in vision from doing that all day, maybe you need to pursue some alternatives. Okay. Yeah, and all, the only way, the only thing I was going to add to that is that when you're going from, like you say, the dark room into the bright room, and it all it depends on your sensitivity too, and whether you are sensitive to that bright light. I'm not saying you need a different pair of glasses for every room you go into, depending on the intensity of the light, but it depends on your symptoms and how much it bothers you. Do you test for sensitivity when you're uh, checking new patients or patients? We can, or? depending again, depending on what their what their complaints are. Or we'll test them for glare or we'll, you know, there's different things that we can do. Okay. And how do people get a hold of you, Doctor? See if they have more questions that they'd like to either ask you off the air or they'd like to get a hold of you and find out who the best person, if, if you're not available or if they're not uh, geographically as close as they might want to be to you, to get a hold of you. It's, uh, the website's www dot tempi care associates dot com and you could probably just put in dr c dot com too we did that to make it a little bit easier so you don't have to write that all out or you can uh, send us an email at office at tempi care associates dot com or just give us a call at 480-967-4910 okay and that's uh, drsee dot com Okay, and we will be back with more Healthy Eyes next week. And uh, thank you both for being here, uh, Stan and uh, Dr. C. And again, we'll be back next week on NBC 1260 and 96.1 FM, Healthy Eyes. You've been listening to Healthy Eyes with Dr. C every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. Arizona time on Entertaining Talk Radio, NBC 1260 at 96.1 FM. The opinions expressed on this show are those of the host and are not meant to diagnose or treat any particular medical issue. Always check with your doctor or eye care professional before making any changes to your vision care. For more information about Healthy Eyes or to learn how you could be a guest on the show or a sponsor of the program, visit Dr. C at www.drsee.com. Well, we haven't talked to everybody yet. Why do we want to go so soon? You know I don't like driving at night. The lights on oncoming traffic and reflections are just off. I'll drive back tonight. I have my anti-reflective lenses with me. I don't have that problem. Works for me. Let's get some more food. Later that same evening. Okay, everybody. Smile for the camera. Wait, I need to get my glasses off. They always reflect the light, and I don't like the way they look. That's it. You're getting anti-reflective lenses, too. Yahoo! It's easy to remember to ask for Kodak lenses.